Delhi Chief Minister and the Aam Aadmi Party convener Arvind Kejriwal, who was called the kingpin and the key conspirator of the Delhi excise policy alleged scam. Remember, this is what the enforcement director said in court last week. The Aam Aadmi Party, since day one, has been calling this arrest illegal. They've claimed that the party is being targeted by the ruling government. The ED is merely acting at the behest of the BJP, is what they alleged. The Aam Aadmi Party and Arvind Kejriwal's team moved the Delhi High Court, challenging this arrest. But today, the Delhi High Court has refused to give any interim relief to the Delhi Chief Minister. The High Court summoned the ED and uh, sought their reply as they feel it would be unfair to pass an order without hearing the other side. So now a date has been set to, the, to hear the main petition of Arvind Kejriwal. Remember, this latest setback comes just a day before Arvind Kejriwal is back in court tomorrow. His ED custody ends tomorrow. The hearing will resume on that. Meanwhile, the Delhi High Court will also hear a plea to remove Arvind Kejriwal from the post of the Delhi Chief Minister as well. The BJP has been alleging that this is unconstitutional, the fact that he is running a government from inside jail. They have been asking for him to resign. Now we have a PIL in courts as well. What happened today in the Delhi High Court? CNN News 18 acts as the Delhi High Court order. Let me take you through the key highlights of why Arvind Kejriwal did not get that interim relief. This is what the court observed. This is what the court order said. That the grounds that are raised in Kejriwal's main and his interim plea are similar. That both his main petition and the one seeking interim relief talk about his arrest being illegal and asking for his immediate release. The court also then said that material in possession with the enforcement director is crucial to decide the present case, which is why the ED must be heard. The Chief Minister's counsel, they contended that there is no reply that is required on behalf of the respondent, which is the ED in this case. The court said that contention is outrightly rejected. For any fair investigation, for any fair trial, both sides must be heard and the ED must be given their time as well. Which is why they now have been given time until the 2nd of April to file their reply and the next hearing will be on the 3rd. Any release order from custody will amount to enlarging the petitioner on bail or interim bail as an interim measure, is what uh, the court also observed. They said that any order passed for interim relief would then amount to deciding the main petition itself because that's what the main petition also wants. Now, let me take you through what the Enforcement Directorate had claimed in court and what Arvind Kejriwal's team had also said. Now, the ED said that Kejriwal is the kingpin. He is the key conspirator. During the hearing today, Kejriwal's counsel said that the Chief Minister is being charged by vicariously. ED said that Kejriwal demanded kickbacks for favours from the South Group, a charge that was outrightly rejected by uh, Kejriwal's legal team, who accused the Enforcement Directorate of unfairness. They called it malafide prosecution. The ED said that Kejriwal was named by several accused in this case. Kejriwal's counsel likened such approvers, accused who have turned approvers, to a Trojan horse. They drew comparisons with infamous Jaichan. They said that it is like betraying Indian rulers by allying with invaders. They have been looked down upon in the past by courts as well. So how can the case entirely rely on just that? The enforcement director claimed that Kejriwal disobeyed summons. He's been evasive during his grilling as well. Arvind Kejriwal's team said that non-cooperation is the most abused phrase by the probe agency. Did that claim hold water? Unfortunately, no for Arvind Kejriwal, which is why any interim relief was denied. Tomorrow, he is back in court. What happens next? Only the agencies can tell, only the courts can tell us. But can he, meanwhile, continue to remain the chief minister and run the Delhi government from within jail? Well, the Aam Aadmi Party says yes. The BJP says no, and so does the Delhi Lieutenant Governor. Can the Delhi LG then step in, in this case, given that Delhi is not a full state? Let me open this up to National Spokesperson of the BJP, Sanju Varma, who continues to be with us. Akshay Marathe, Spokesperson of the Aam Aadmi Party, also with me. Akshay Marathe, let me ask you this. The fact that the court today observed that no interim relief can be given because a similar petition is already there. An interim relief cannot be given when that's exactly what the main petition also is wanting and which is already being heard before the custody uh, hearing happens tomorrow. Was this just bad legal strategy then? First of all, I want to start off by reminding viewers that this entire case that is against Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, Manish Sisodia, Sanjay Singh, Vijay Nair is based on the statement of just one individual, Mr. Sarat Chandra Reddy, who has on record <laughs> through electoral bonds paid the BJP 60 crore rupees of bribe and after the money was paid, the person who was accused of, this, of the corruption scam has become a government approver and a prosecution witness.
and is supporting the Bharatiya Janata Party in this entire fake investigation that is going on. So, point number one, the BJP needs to answer. Why did it take money from the scam accused? They are accusing this person and they are taking money from the same person. That is the kind of absolute pit of corruption that the BJP is indulging in, and they are accusing the Aam Aadmi Party of it. Point number two. What happened today in the Delhi High Court is actually the classic enforcement directorate style of delaying tactics because they knew that they would ha- they have no case to show. Can you imagine that after two years of running an investigation, filing charge sheet after charge sheet after charge sheet, they had the gall to tell the High Court that they want to present fresh evidence against Mr. K. Jival. They want more time to reply to the petition filed by Mr. K. Jival. Then what have you been doing for the last two years? You have raided us many times. You have investigated many times. Not a no, single. No, the time that was being sought by the ED, which was granted by the court, Akshay Marathi today time. was to reply to this petition that the Enforcement Directorate hadn't received until yesterday. That is on record, which is also why the court has found no merit in the arguments that Kejriwal's counsel made and said that let me give for a free and fair trial. Let me give time to the Enforcement Directorate, which May is the respondent comment? in this case. Can I can I can I read out what the court has said? The yes, please. Said no, no, this can't be. Let him let him let him let him let him finish his points. Anjur, I'll come to you. The court the court says we question the arrest may be politically motivated and malified. There are serious concerns which have been raised by Mr. Kejriwal's lawyer Shri Singhvi, and that is why they wanted the enforcement directorate to reply. To the que- uh, court's question, the court so, has already now, said that. Sure, there may be merit. There may be merits in the facts that you're putting out, which the court arrest. also seems to agree with you. But which is why I asked you, was it just bad legal strategy then? But Sanjeev Arma, yes, go ahead. Thank you. You know now, I hope Akshay Marathi will not heckle because I listened to him very patiently. Yes. Go First ahead. and foremost, you know, ulta chor kothwal ko dante, chori upar se sina jori, the pot calling the kettle black. That is what the Aam Aadmi Party is doing. I repeat. It is not just one Sarath Chandra Reddy who turned an approver. Let me remind the Aam Aadmi Party, and more importantly, your viewers should know: Manish Sisodia ko jail, Bharatiya Janata Party Narendra Modi ya Amit Shah ne nahi bheja. Manish Sisodia is in lockup today thanks to the Supreme Court denying him bail. Satender Jain is in jail today in the liquor scam thanks to the Supreme Court denying him bail. Sanjay Singh is in jail today, not because of Narendra Modi or the BJP, but because the Supreme Court denied bail to Sanjay Singh. The second and important point: they say that in any criminal offence, particularly money laundering, there are three things which are very important. Was there malafide intent? Yes. Was there a proceed of crime? Yes. Was there a money trail? Yes. Read the October 2023 judgment by two Supreme Court judges. Yes, Sanju Verma ne nahi kaha, na Narendra Modi ne kaha hai. Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice S V N Bhatti of the Supreme Court said that in the liquor scam perpetrated by Arvind Kejriwal, abetted by Arvind Kejriwal, created by Arvind Kejriwal, encouraged by Arvind Kejriwal, there is a money trail of three. 138 crores. Yes, Supreme Court's verdict. Hai. Now no. coming to the approvals. Was Sarath Chandra Reddy the only approver? Pono? No. You had Dinesh Arora who stunned approver. Why Section 306 of the CRPC? You have Amit Arora who has spoken out against Kejriwal. You have Vijay Nair, the ex-communication head of Aam Aadmi Party, who has spoken out against Kejriwal, Sanjay Singh, and Manish Sisodia. You have Arun Ramchandra Pillai and K. Kavita, who have spoken out like canaries against Arvind Kejriwal. You have Samir Mahendra of Indo Spirit, one of the key. Persons in this entire episode who has also started singing like a canary and said that ha, mujh se bride mangi gayi and this was done at Kejriwal's residence in the presence of Kejriwal and don't forget the deposition by former Excise Commissioner Arva Gopi Krishna and former Deputy Excise Commissioner of Delhi Suresh Gopi and former PA of Manish Sisodia C Arvind. These people have clearly said liquor scam hua tha. Kejriwal ji ko iske baare mein jankari thi, Manish Sisodia ko jankari thi, Sanjay Singh ko jankari thi, and each of these people have personally been given bribes to the tune of two to three crore each. And the CAG report, last but not the least, can I, can I you say. Now? now I'm finishing my last point. She's, she's just about the to CAG. finish. Let her finish. The CAG, the CAG is not 
a handmaiden of the BJP. Under Part Five of the Constitution, the CAG is an independent constitutional statutory body, and CAG has said that Kejriwal's liquor scam has resulted in a loss of more than two thousand five hundred crores to Delhi's taxpayers. इसलिए यहाँ बैठकर कत्तर इनाम कत्तर ईमानदार बनने का जो आप ढोंग करते हो वो ढकोसला प्लीज शेड योर हिपोक्रेसी फॉर चेंज एंड एक्सेप्ट दैट यू मिल्क द दिल्ली टैक्स पेयर्स फॉर सेल्फ ग्रेटिफिकेशन कैन आई कैन आई रिस्पॉन्ड नाउ गो एट प्लीज नॉट वंस नॉट वंस हैज द बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन आंसर्ड द क्वेश्चन Why is the kingpin of the scam, Mr. Sharad Chandra Reddy, a major donor of the Bharti Janata Party? Why is this person, who himself is being accused of paying Aam Aadmi Party only a hundred crore rupee bribe, is on the record through electoral bonds paying the BJP sixty crore rupees? Can the BJP deny that they have taken money from Sharad Chandra Reddy? What they are accusing Aam Aam Aadmi Party of doing, the BJP has been caught red-handed. and unfortunately if the electoral bonds disclosure had not happened we would never have found out you know the entire country was being misled by the bjp they were calling everybody corrupt but it turned out they are the biggest corrupt of them all they have taken thousands of crore rupees from people in return from being let go off from ed custody now this sharath chandra reddy when he gave the money the enforcement directorate did not object to his bail immediately he got bail on on complaints of having lower back pain have you ever heard That's that somebody is let go from jail after after complaining of lower back pain arvin kejriwal is a diabetes patient he has low sugar levels right now but the bjp and enforcement directorate are hell bent on keeping him in jail why because they are scared of arvin kejriwal but the relief that's not coming through coming coming through court akshay marathe it's not the enforcement okay. directorate that's blocking it it's the courts which is why my first Can question I, to you when i opened this up was is it your legal strategy that is flawed in deep because you seem to have the merits of the case as you claim to do But you unfortunately, you are not respond. convincing the courts about it. May I come in, Napoon? Let me respond on the courts. Allow me. Allow me just yes, one minute to respond on yes, the courts. Yes, thirty seconds. Yes, thirty seconds, Akshay Marathi. Go ahead. Section Section forty five of the PMLA Act, under which Mr. Arvind Kejriwal is in jail, says that you are guilty until proven innocent. This is the exact opposite of what our country has been following. No, I need to come in. He has had a second intervention. So the BJP. has conveniently used a very hard law that was actually meant for terrorism the law uh, came during the upa era sir somebody that you are no, in no, alliance no, with no, now but sanju verma no, yes go ahead yes sanju verma go ahead actually the amendment was passed Akshay, years ago by sure. the bjp no, this is not fair I sure know. but you can't Akshay. have it you can't have it all your way you can't say yes the law was brought in by an ally of mine but it is only being weaponized now but sanju verma yes no, go no, ahead yes you know punam and and akshay now i did not heckle you we are having a sensible debate punam You know, I was reading the enforcement directorate's, uh, you know, powers via the PMLA, and it is true. The PMLA Act gives enforcement directorate so lot of powers of search, seizure, and arrest under Section 17, 18, Section 24 talks about reverse burden of proof, which means jail is not the norm. Uh, you know, uh, ideally, but in PMLA cases, jail is the norm, and bail is an exception. And then you have Section 45 of the PMLA, which says that money laundering cases. Are non-cognizable and non-bailable, which means they are cognizable, bailable offences. So, has the enforcement directorate done anything which is outside the powers that have been granted to it? Why section 18, 19, 20, 21, 45? No. Ideally, Pooja, if you, me, or even Akshay, we were to not appear before the ED after three summons, the enforcement directorate can so moto arrest us. But because Arvind Kejriwal is who he is. a sitting chief minister the ed actually gave him a long rope nine summons were brazenly defied repeatedly blatantly kejriwal ko laga if i brazen it out you know nothing is going to happen to me but jo kehte hai na kanoon ke haath bahut lambe hote hain and the law caught up with kejriwal now coming to your pointed query uh, akshay about sarat chandra reddy let this be known on your show Poonam, I have spoken about this on a zillion debates in the last 48 hours. Sarath Chandra Reddy having turned an approval does not mean that the ongoing investigation against Sarath Chandra Reddy has been suspended by the BJP or the Modi government or the ED, which is what is being peddled. Because don't forget that once you turn an approval, there is no guarantee that your sentence will be commuted. Because in effect, you have actually admitted that yes. You were a perpetrator, a part of the liquor scam syndicate, and Section 195 of the IPC, Section 308 of the CRPC, and Section 
340 of the CRPC say that no approver has a blanket right to his sentence being commuted. So, after you have a bad cut, that we are morally calling Sarat Chandra Reddy, please go and educate yourself in the basics of IPC and CRPC. And last but not the least, you are saying that Sarat Chandra Reddy gave money to the BJP and hence we allowed him to turn approver and we overlooked whatever he had to say. By your logic, Akshay Marathi. The income tax raided Mega Engineering and its three subsidiaries in 2019. The income tax and the enforcement directorate raided Santiago Martin's future gain in 2020 and 2021. But guess what? The biggest beneficiaries of Santiago Martin's future gaining are the TMC and the DNK. The biggest beneficiaries of the uh, largest of uh, Mega Engineering are the Congress Party, the DNK and the TMC, no. all who are part of the dot dot alliance. ट्रस्टेडरीवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्सूवर्स
about probity. This is also about optics. Elections are just around the corner. The opposition says all of this is time to elections. Well, we'll find out sooner than later. But it has to be about probity. It has to be about politicians, elected representatives especially, of being above board, of wanting to offer themselves for scrutiny much more than anybody else would. <laughs> on that note, I want to uh, thank both of you for joining us here on this broadcast. That's all the time that I have. It's time for a quick break on this edition. Back in just a few minutes.